I hooking up my airlines? hydraulic wet kit line So here is how the lines go connected guys this one here i just put it on there to show you but i'm about to take it off this one is to open the tailgate of the hand dump now i've been uh, wanting to go buy a new airline but i want one like this that spiral and flexible so i'll be buying one of these hopefully tomorrow because i don't really like how this looks it don't look nice like that i'm about to take it off but i just put it on to show you and here is everything Everything looks pretty good and nothing is touching the chassis as you can see. What I'm going to do right now is raise the handle and remove the landing gear. If y'all remember a couple videos back, I did the mud flaps on the T-bar. Well, guess what? I didn't like it. And the following day, I went ahead and shortened them. So I did shorten my mud flaps to an inch and a half. And I gotta say, it looks way, way better because they were dragging. I mean, there's a difference between scraping <laughs> and there's a difference between dragging. And they were dragging bad they still scrape but it's not as bad so I we did everything and I gotta say they look way way better I really like how they came out Let me show you what the truck looks like all aired out. I got no air in the front, no air in the back either. I dropped the bags. And as you can see, the mud flaps are on the ground. Now, when I uh, hook up to the low boy, I did a load last week. Now with the low boy, when I unhooked to load a machine, I guess uh, all the weight on the back of the truck it makes it go a little bit lower 
and I do uh, scrape these. They drag a little bit, not a whole lot. I'll post the picture right now so you guys can see it. And that's about how much they drag with the low boy. Now with this one, I'm pretty sure it's gonna drag a little bit also once I uh, lower the bag and I'm loaded. I like to dump the bags in the back when I'm dumping with the end up. That's just my preference, I like doing it. I don't really like the bag stretching out whenever you don't dump them. About two weeks ago, I was pulling a flatbed. I posted a picture on YouTube and on Instagram. And look what happened. I scratched the fender right here. That was my fault. I had the airbags in the front all the way down. And I had forgot I was jackknifing to make a turn. And this happened. I scraped the, the fender. I thought it was going to be worse though. But that's nothing too bad because the clearance from here to the flatbed trailer it was it was very low it was way less than this and less than the low boy and also the the guy that was operating the the forklift he ran into my watermelon light as you can see he bent it but he did he didn't pay for it i might go to the chrome stop tomorrow and uh, get a new watermelon light but yeah those loads right there with the flatbed I did three that night. I started like at, I want to say 11, and I finished like at 10 at night, but they paid 400 a load, so I made 1200 that day. I didn't spend a lot of fuel, and I couldn't pass it up. That's why I went ahead and did it. new dash I got a dash made in Mexico it's, it's already done the guy that's gonna install it I think he's going to Mexico in two weeks and he's gonna bring it with him so I can't wait to install that that's gonna be one of the main big things that will be done to the interior of the truck because this dash as y'all know it's all broken and cracked but I've been waiting for that for a long long time I think it's been already like three or four months, but with all the COVID stuff, Mexico shutting down and people getting sick and dying and, and stuff, uh, it backed everything up. And the guy did go last week. He said they weren't open, but he said the dash is there. They told him that it's ready. So hopefully next week he goes, he can finally bring it.
doesn't want to accelerate anymore. I gotta take that governor crap off. It be pissing me off sometimes when I'm trying to pass somebody that they're doing like 73, 75, and it's like, I get on the left lane, I try to pass them and I can't. And I hold up back traffic. So hopefully I can change that to 80 or 85, just so I can pass up no cars. at 60 psi i have them all the way up right now because i'm about to pass a uh, railroad track but as soon as i pass it and get on the feeder i will drop my bags to uh 30 or 40 psi and i'm kind of heavy right now because the material is kind of moist it's not fully dry flap scrape right there and this is how the steering wheel is at 60 psi it's all crooked and shit but once i lower it it'll it'll fix Normally, if you ride at 30 or 40 PSI, you just switch the steering wheel and have it set at the at the PSI you ride in, but I don't really care. It doesn't bother me at all that it's all crooked. But that does not mean that your alignment's bad or anything like that. right 
right here.
right so the the front of the truck and the rear is completely slammed i dropped the airbags and as you can see the mud flaps do touch the ground when there's a a trailer hooked down with weight now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna raise up the front so you guys can see how much more the t-bar goes down remember i told you guys that i don't connect my uh tailgate air hose until i get here because i don't like the way it looks so i'm gonna do that right now